Hey everybody and welcome to episode 5 of the Minecrafters Bee Breeding Guide. I'm Captain Jack and today we're going to be talking about the Alviary. Now this is a multi-block structure that is the most complex of all the bee houses. Um, and you can do a lot of uh, things to this block. It's very customizable. But we're going to start off by building the basic Alviary. And then we're going to be talking about how to um, add a bunch of different modifiers and stuff onto it. Okay. Episode 5, we're almost done here. We're about to get into genetics and so on and so forth. But let's see what we need to build this alviary. Um, we're going to need a bunch of scented panels. And that's going to be made by um, putting a bunch of honey inside a carpenter and then using some beeswax, pollen, and royal jelly. Now, you're going to have to have those automated bee setups to uh, have a bunch of this pollen and royal jelly going unless you're really patient and want to do it all manually but we learned about automation in, in episode four so if you didn't already check that out make sure you go ahead and do that now it's going to take a lot of scented paneling it's going to take a lot of royal jelly beeswax and a lot of resources to build these alviaries let's see what uh, it actually involves a uh, grand total of 216 royal jelly and pollen uh, 432 beeswax four, uh, 648 wooden planks and 1080 honey drops or 108,000 uh, millibuckets, I believe that is. Um, impregnated casings is going to take 216 wood and 6,750 millibuckets of seed oil. Now, while these are brewing up over here, let me just show you what I've done because I know I've walked by this um, in all five episodes or all four episodes so far. Uh, basically, these are huge uh, iron tanks and they're holding all of my liquids for me because as you're um, automating this process and as you're getting a lot of honeycombs and uh, getting beeswax and so on and so forth, you're going to want to process and probably hold it in big tanks like this. It's just a lot easier and you're going to need it in liquid form anyways later on. So in the squeezer, um, I basically put uh, my honey through here or my honeycombs and it squeezes out or honey drops. I'm sorry. Let me grab one of those there grab some honey drops, put it right in here. Oh boy, I'm on a streak here. Okay, got a bunch of honey drops here. It's filling up, press the lever. It's gonna go over into the tank. And then I have a Tesseract hooked up underneath there to transport my honey wherever I want to in the entire world ever. Okay, same thing with seed oil, water, and uh, DNA. We'll talk about DNA in the next episode. But basically I have a Tesseract back here and it's set to honey. I have it constantly pumping into here so you can do it wirelessly anywhere in the world and we're going to have to make a lot of scented panelings. The other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start making more impregnated casings, and that's going to require a lot of seed oil, as we just found out. Um, so inside a carpenter with some seed oil and some uh, wood, not wooden planks, um, any of the wooden logs, you're going to want to make a bunch of impregnated casings. And if we grab these, take them out, let's walk over to our AE system over here. Let's get um, some scented paneling, put it just like this. Put this in here. These are there only one is needed, and bam, we have an alviary block. Okay, and we're ready to basically build our first alviary once we have I think 23 of these or so, and some wooden slabs. Okay, so let's walk out here and let's build a real basic alviary, and then we'll get into talking about um, some some pretty advanced ones right here. So I have some of this stuff set up because I don't want to wait, and neither do you and uh, we're going to build a basic alviary. So we're going to need to put it in a uh, nine block pattern like this, and we're going to go three high, just like this. OK, and it's not going to become an alviary yet because we haven't put any wood slabs on top here. So let's get some oak wood slabs. It doesn't have to be oak wood, I don't think. Um, so we'll go with oak wood. And there we go. It turned into an alviary. And if you open this up inside, um, you can start the bee breeding process. Now you'll notice that there's no space for frames inside this alviary. And uh, we're going to learn about that in a second. Um, but basically what this does, it, it will uh, increase the productivity of your bees. And uh, because of the versatility of this block, um, it's, it's going to be an absolute must. This is the next step in awesome as far as breed breeding goes, bee breeding goes. Um, so yeah, this is the alviary. That's how you build it. Pretty simple. Let's get into some of the cool ways that you can modify this thing because there are a lot. All right, now I rattled off the entire list there. No, I didn't actually. Here it is. This is what we're going to be going, o going over. Let me bounce up here a little bit. Um, we're going to be talking about, we already did the alviary. Okay. 
basic block. You're just going to need a lot of different materials for that. Then we're going to talk about the rain shield, lighting, housing, the heater, the fan, the hydro regulator, the mutator, the swarmer, the stabilizer, and the sieve. Okay, not necessarily in that particular order. So let's go ahead and find out what all of these things do, and then we're going to go ahead and find out how to make them. Okay, so we're going to go down here. And I knew it would do that. Ugh, it's going to bug me anyways. Okay. Alveary enhancement blocks. All enhancement blocks must be placed on level 1 or 2 of the alveary. If you place them on level 3, the alveary will not complete and you will not be able to use it. So don't do that. Alrighty then. The alveary, the basic building block used to craft other alveary blocks, which we will see in one second. The frame housing. Um, now, these blocks, all these blocks are interchangeable with the... Um, uh, the 18 alveary blocks on the bottom two levels of the alveary. And again, we'll go into that in a second, if that doesn't make any sense to you. The frame housing adds one space for a um, frame per housing, and no more than seven are really needed for any one alveary. And if you want to look up the uh, mechanics of how alvearies work as far as alveary ticks and um, compound percentages up to 100%, which will give you... Um, produce every 27 seconds or so on and so forth. Um, go ahead and look that up for yourself. Um, but basically you can add frame housings to the alveary. And this is unique because you can add one frame housing and put a frame in there, or you can add a ton of frame housings. I think up to 18, which is a waste again, uh, but you can add a, a bunch of frame housings to make your bees extremely productive. The rain shield is fairly self-explanatory. It allows non-flyers to work even when it's raining, so they can work right through that rain. Uh, lighting allows your bees to work during the night, even if they are not nocturnal. So these are two basic blocks that are really, really nice, and uh, ones that you don't have to worry about um, you, uh, genetically modifying your bees to work around. You just throw these in there, and it works for everything. The hydro regulator, not to be confused with a hydro regulator, which doesn't exist in Minecraft, um, is used to ingest, adjust the levels of humidity inside the alveary, either up or down depending on the fluid inside. And lava will um, increase the temperature inside the alveary by 10 while lowering or yeah but while lowering the humidity by 20 which is going to make it more arid and uh, water will decrease the temperature by 10 and increase the humidity by 20 so it'll make it pretty humid and you can only add one of those liquids in at a time we'll see that in a minute the heater increases the temperature the temperature increases the temperature inside of the alveary by 20 percent per heater um or like 20 which is like one tick in the up direction or the hotter direction um, and this block will need power the fan will decrease the temperature by 20 percent per fan and that also needs power the sieve catches pollen that would have otherwise been used to mutate uh, nearby trees and the leaves of nearby trees um, the stabilizer prevents new species of bees from appearing but still allows traits to be passed on um, from one bee to another that's secondary traits uh, for instance fertility um, speed lifespan junk like that. Um, bees can still revert to older species of bees depending on certain circumstances. And those circumstances would be something like if you were to breed two hybrids together, let's say it was a common forest and a common meadows, it would still have a chance to revert back to a meadows or forest because it's not a new species that because that's already built into the bee. Okay, It just won't mutate into a cultivated Swarmers has a chance to spawn swarmer hives near the alveary containing bees with that little prefix there, right there. Um, and these bees have a chance to die and not produce a queen. So if you see that right there, um, that means that your, your queens have a chance to never ever come back and you could lose them. The mutator adds a bonus mutation chance based on the materials supplied. So if you put in soul sand into the mutator, um, it's going to use one per, per queen death. So once the queen dies, it's going to consume a soul sand and, and any of these other materials. Um, ender pearls provide a two times multiplier. Eyes of ender four times, uranium 10 times, and a nether star is 50 times, which is supposedly greater than 100%, giving you a um, absolute chance of mutation. I've actually seen it not mutate a bee before. Those stupid glittering bees cause me a lot of headaches on the regular world. But in any case, these mutators do have a chance to apply this prefix to your bees. And uh, I think we'll go ahead and try to get that to appear in a minute here. 
Um, but if you do see that, that's dangerous. Um, it doesn't so much matter if you have uh, the serums for the species of bees, which we'll talk about again in the next episode. Um, but just watch out for this little prefix. You're going to want to be really, really careful once you start mutating that you don't breed this prefix uh, or this little shortened lifespan or um, all like, like one foot in the grave, the other on a banana peel type deal with these bees. Okay. So these are all the modifier box blocks again, got to be placed in the bottom two levels. And they're going to do all kinds of great stuff, which we have just learned about. Let's find out how to make them. First of all, you are going to need this thing called a thermionic fabricator. And that's going to be crafted with four gold, three glass, a sturdy casing, and a chest. And that's going to give you the thermionic fabricator. Inside of the thermionic fabricator, we have a spot here and a spot here. Um, this spot here is for glass, glass panes, or sand, I believe. And once you put that in there, it's going to fill up that thing here, and it's going to say it's liquid glass, okay? And this thing will do some weird thing over here, which we don't really eh, need to worry about. Anyways, in order to make a bunch of these, we are going to need these things called golden electron tubes. And that's exactly how you make it. If you pull these out, you get four at a time. Um, it's going to slowly deplete this liquid glass. You can see that's going down. And then you're going to have to just keep a, a supply in there. Okay, and I believe the machine also needs to be powered. Um, for a few of the other advanced blocks, we're actually going to need um, really expensive ones. And they are crafted. Using that. Okay. Dimatine electron tubes. I guess that's what you call them. Okay. And these are a little bit more advanced, but we are going to need these golden electron tubes to craft most of the items or most of the um, enhancement blocks for the alveary, okay? So this thermionic fabricator is going to help you get that stuff. Now I have a bunch of these thrown into work tables, and we're going to kind of go round robin here and show you how to make them. Um, some iron, a golden electron, three golden electron tubes, that's the, and an alveary in this block. Um, it can be substituted with like other ones of these blocks. Just go ahead and, and use NEI to find out what's interchangeable. But sometimes you can, like if you make a fan, you can change into a heater, I think. That may be wrong. But um, we're going to just stick with this base alveary block. Okay, so if you knew that you could use other blocks interchangeably, you get a gold star. All right, so the this will make a frame housing, um, some glowstone in the golden electron tube, and the alveary block will make a lighting. Okay, and the same thing, it just goes around and around. You need an electron tube for most of these, not all of them, um, but you can always need that base alveary block to make this stuff here, okay? So again, you can check this stuff out in NEI. And the sieve's going to be woven silk. That's probably one of the harder ones, um, unless you have the uh, the stringy combs or whatever they are to make this stuff, okay? A couple of the harder ones here that are going to need this, these um, special electron tubes, the dynam diamond ones, this is the mutator block, a couple gold, now very two of those. And for the swarmer, you're going to need actually four of them and two gold ingots plus the alveary. And that's going to give you the swarmer. So let's run outside and let's take a look at um, what some of these blocks do. Okay, I'm just going to kind of pop through them as I have them set up here. Basically, this alveary is set up with a swarmer in it. And the swarmer needs royal jelly. Um, in order to have a chance to spawn these things. And I believe it's like a 1% chance that it will spawn one of these swarmer hives. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a scoop here. We're going to go check out what it did. Okay, so this, this consumes royal jelly at a fairly decent clip. So be careful when you're using these. I honestly have never used them um, in any practical way. But um, I did notice that there is a good thing that you can get from them. And uh, it's spawning me copper. I think copper hives, which isn't a normal one, and you can see the tooltip is really different. They're industrious in here. Okay, this is a copper tile dot or dot copper. Um, hopefully, this doesn't crash my game. Let me try to go ahead and take this. Industrious princess. Huh. Okay. Anyways, um, you see on the bottom it has that shortened lifespan, and I actually didn't those. I didn't do the brackets right earlier. That's okay. That means that this industrious princess has a chance to die, but it gave me an, an extra industrious princess, which I didn't have before. So um, you could breed that until it's dead, and then uh, just have this thing keep swarming or um, spawning more of these swarm hives, okay? And there's a bunch of them. These things go all over the place. There's one here. There's uh, one over there that's kind of spawned in the air a little bit. 
Um, there's that one in the tree. So the radius is pretty big. It's a lot bigger than I actually thought, but those were definitely not there before I built this. So that's what the swarmer does. Um, we're going to take a look at the sieve real quick here. Um, this is There's tons of trees around here because we didn't really talk about it a lot, but the bees have a chance to um, pollinate the leaves of the trees with uh, the flowers around them to create crossbred trees, which is a whole other subject that I'm not going to get into. Um, but the sieve I have here in the bottom needs a woven silk. Oops, and I just lost all those pollen. I didn't realize it would do that, so don't ever take woven silk out when there's pollen sitting in there. Um, we'll come back to this and see if it comes back. But basically, this sieve just catches the pollen um, that would have otherwise been used to breed these trees directly. So if you have an alveary set up or even an apiary or bee house, um, actually, I'm not sure if bee houses can pollinate. Um, and if you go and see a weird colored tree, or if you put some spectacles on and you go out and look and see if any of your um, bees have pollinated the trees, you can grab that pollen. It'll, it'll come into here instead of directly to the trees and then you can take it out of here and if you right click it on some leaves of the right tree you can uh, pollinate the tree manually so that's what the sieve is for um, we have our basic alveary here um, we're gonna go ahead and look at a couple things kinda bunched all up into one here we're gonna look at all of the rest of the blocks basically I have automating alvearies and this is the same thing um, applies to any of these other things it's just the um, apiarist pipe we have a wooden transport pipe with the auto arctic gate and the um, set to anything down in black, any bees down in blue, so bees will go back. Um, any byproduct or extra bees will go into this ME interface, which gets sucked into my system. And uh, you can see here that I have a bunch of cocoa combs. My bees disappeared in there for some reason. But you can automate them just the same. Um, just make sure that you don't place these pipes on one of the um, enhancement blocks that you placed on the alveary. Um, it needs to be either on the top level or on levels that don't have enhancement blocks. So automating is, is pretty easy. Now, the unique thing about alvearies is that you can actually automate the input of frames, which is really awesome. And what I have here is I have a frame housing. And uh, just so you can see um, how to actually add these blocks, if I get some, let's get a, let's get a lighting, some of those. And... Uh, We'll put a stabilizer in there. You can actually break these and you can put these in at any time. Okay, It's recommended that you take out your bee first. So we got a rain shield, a lighter, or a, um, alveolar lighting, and a stabilizer. And uh, I don't have anything else. So I'm going to plug that back up there. And this is going to recognize that the blocks are a part of the alveary. And you'll see in a second here that's going to turn back into something that we can click on. Okay. So it, it's just adding these is just as simple as, as what I just did. Again, you cannot add mutator blocks or... Okay, that just went against everything that I said. But I something you can't really do that. Don't do that. That's not a good thing. Maybe you can add them on the four corners. Okay, anyways. We all learned something here today. So what I have here is um, precision export buses exporting frames into the frame housing. And if I pull this out... It's going to pop one right back into there as long as it has it in the system. So that's a way to automate the frame the frame um, input so you can keep your bees 100% productive 100% of the time. Um, you can also automate mutators. So I have a bunch of soul sand in here, and soul sand provides a 1.5x mutator mutation chance to the bees. And if I take this out, I have a precision export bus exporting soul sand, and that's going to go ahead and fill right back up again. So if I wanted to keep this full because I wanted mutations because I was crossbreeding, um, that's just a way you can do it. And the more mutator blocks that you add, the more of a chance that um, your bee will mutate because these actually all stack with each other. Okay, So that's one, one thing to know. If you don't have uranium or any of the high power mutator stuff, if you put a bunch of mutator blocks in there and, uh, and you try to mutate something, uh, there's a good chance that it will mutate. Let me grab a, let's grab a forest princess and a meadows drone. Okay, we're gonna put, we're gonna put these guys in here. Let's, instead of soul stand, we're gonna put, let's say, let's put a nether star in there, see what happens. 
Okay, where is it? Not used to seeing these in default. But anyways, I'm going to put a mutator in there. Um, let's go ahead and grab a Nova frame to speed this junk along. Okay, and we'll see if we can get that um, shortened lifespan or uh, the holy crap lifespan mode. Yes, we did. Okay, it, it did get sucked back into the system and it's going to come back in a minute here. Um, but you can see that we have that, that uh-oh Oreo little uh, bracket there that means that those bees could potentially die. So mutating bees could be a really bad thing if you don't get, get their serum quick enough, okay? Um, so you can automate frame housing, you can automate the, uh, the mutator blocks. Um, you can also automate, and I have behind here, you can also automate the hydro regulator, and I have this exporting lava cells to make it more arid inside here. And uh, that export bus will, will pop more cells into there, and it holds up like 10 buckets or something, okay? Um, having two of these inside one alveary isn't going to do anybody any good because I think they just negate themselves. So I didn't want to put a water one in here as well. Um, but this makes it more arid so I could potentially breed um, like modest drones or modest bees inside this thing even though we're in the uh, a snow biome. Okay, um, So that's the hydro regulator. The stabilizer, um, there's not really a way to demonstrate that. Again, that just makes it so there's uh, no chance that it will mutate into a new bee. And this is going to start turning into a disaster. Actually, it just it just made all uh, commons. Um, there's a good chance that it'll, she'll keep coming back, but there's also a chance that it won't. Okay. Uh, last but not least, we're going to talk about these uh, heaters and fans. And basically, the heater, as we said, makes it hotter, and it's 20% hotter per heater. And the same thing with the fan, except in the opposite direction. It's going to make it a little bit colder. And these things are going to suck a ton of power. So if I flip this on here, you're going to notice two things. One, that these lit up red. okay, And two, that this is just draining power like crazy. okay. So you're going to want to watch out of your power supply. You're definitely going to want to, These are really end game blocks um, if you do apply a bunch of these things on them. But they'll light up red when they have power. And again, this is just uh, a redstone energy conduit connecting all of those there. And then with the fans, they light up blue when they are on, and they suck just as much power. Okay, so if you want to put these inside here to regulate temperature, depending on what bees that you want to put inside of here, you can just flip it up, make it hotter, make it colder. Um, you can swap these blocks out, uh, maybe put some water in there instead of lava to make it a little bit more humid, uh, more conducive to tropical bees or tropical drones, something like that. But uh, yeah, that's what you can do with that. Let's go ahead and check the sieve and see if we have anything left in here. And I think that's going to be it for this episode. There is not, but that's okay. This is the alveary. Um, this is what you're going to want to work towards. Absolutely, 100%. We'll go back to our little automation here. And you can see that once you have stuff automated, um, we're going to have a ton of royal jelly. There's a bunch of different drones in here. There's all kinds of junk in here. And uh, those extra drones are going to be really useful in the next episode okay let me just go ahead and double check in here make sure i didn't skip anything we got the frame housing rain shield sieve micro regulator heater fan lighting mutator swarmer and alveary lighting uh, we talked about the need for woven silk in there we talked about the hydro regulator with lava and water the Swarmer needs Royal Jelly. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's it. I hope this was a shorter episode than normal. I'll find out as soon as I end it for myself. In the next episode, we're going to really get into this bee house. And we're going to start um, genetically modifying our bees to make absolutely incredible super bees. And if you are wondering what an incredible super bee is, we'll just go over here and check out these massively productive um Let's just beelize this thing. It's in the process of changing. Bam. Check that baby out. Longest, fastest, maximum, 4x fertility, crazy area, purifying aura. We can make some really awesome bees, and uh, we can have a really good time with genetics. So we'll see that in episode 6. Sticks. <laughs> episode 6. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you are always poised by checking out all of our social media outlets listed here. That's it for me. Have a great night.